Here goes, and welcome to episode 37 of Throwback Hoops. Just a reminder to follow the video show on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, Stitcher, we're available on all platforms. And once again, I appreciate, uh, we, we appreciate everyone's support every week uh, who tunes into the show. Uh, and as, as always, I'm joined by my main man, Robbie Clayton. What's good, brother? What's up, Woods? How are you, mate? Um, yeah, it's kind of that weird feeling now, isn't it? When there's no NBA, there's no NBL. Um, I think I messaged you on the weekend is that it's all about NBL one now and obviously a bit of WNBA in the World Cup. But yeah, it's that strange time of year, isn't it? Where we sort of, you know, don't maybe watch as much sport as we normally do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's nice um, that you've got the NBL one as we've spoken about in, in the off season now, because at least you've got some hoops there to, to, to follow. You can get and... your weekly fix, right? Yeah, it was nice to go out there and what you commentate that really close game on, on ah, the weekend, definitely. Man. Yeah, so. we'll talk a little bit about that later, but it was great fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. And look, it's only fitting. I know I know we said we're gonna do an Australian uh themed month in terms of our NBA jerseys, Robbie, but I thought I'd break the trend a little bit uh because it's of a bit, the Warriors. A bit naughty, but yeah, we'll take it. Yeah. Because of the Warriors victory today. Um and I noticed you've got a Warriors one hanging and you've kind of followed the trend as well as representing the Warriors, haven't you? So why don't you tell the audience a little bit of what you yeah, got going on today? Definitely. So look, I'm continuing that theme. I think I did a double deli, a double patty mill. So today, none other than a double Andrew Bogut. Uh, so look, as you can see, the one hanging up there, it's um, Andrew Bogut's Golden State Warriors Adidas white home jersey. So look, as we said, thought it was appropriate to hang that one up. Um, nice looking jersey, that one. I don't think I've ever actually worn that one. It's a, yeah, I've nice got the same with one, the white, man. With the white one, yeah, definitely. And um, look, I'll just sort of stand up and show the one I'm wearing. It's actually an Andrew Bogut rookie jersey, which is pretty cool. So I'll stand up and show that one and then talk a little bit about the, the big man. Number one overall pick, Andrew Bogut in his rookie year with the Bucks. Very nice jersey. Robbie's wearing there, the white jersey. I like it, Robbie. It's a random jersey, that one. It was one of those ones I think they sold in, like, it was with In Sport or Just Sport or something, one of those back in the day. And it was before any other shop was sort of shops were stocking jerseys. It was before Rebel did them and all those sort of things. And they literally just had Bogut ones. So glad I've got that one. But um, look, I guess just a little bit about Bogut. Um, Bogut played 14 years in the NBA after getting drafted by Milwaukee in 2005 at pick one out of Utah. Um, previously out of the AIS. I feel like I say that every week when I talk about these Aussie, Aussies in the NBA now. Um, so, of course, Bogut played with Milwaukee. Golden State, Dallas, Cleveland, although not much, and the Lakers uh, before retiring um, as one of your Sydney Kingswoods. Um, yep, and let's not forget he returned to the Warriors for, for yeah, one exactly last right, twenty nineteen. Well, yep, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, so look, Bogut's had a number of accolades, most notably winning an NBA championship in twenty fifteen, um, an All NBA third team in twenty ten. Great effort there. Not quite sure how he didn't make the All Star game, but anyway, that's another story for another day. Um, he was a one time All Defensive team in twenty fifteen. Um, he was an NBL M- MVP and Defensive Player of the Year in 2019. And of course, he won a gold medal in MVP at the FIBA Under-19 World Championships in 2003 and represented the Boomers at the 04, 08 and 16 Olympics. So pretty good effort by the big man there. Um, so now, Woods, you know I do have a Bogut bobblehead. Looking through the old cabinet today, I think this might be my favourite bobblehead. Oh, so, I love it, man. Every time I come over, I see Two it. hands. It's the heaviest one I've got, too. Look at the size of this bad boy. So... As you can see, Bogut's rocking the exact same jersey that I'm wearing there. It's the old draft day jersey there. So really like this one. As I said, really heavy. So you can tell it's actually made pretty well, this one. Um, I think these were quite a limited run. I uh, don't know how many. It's even got the New York draft 05 in the back there. Not quite sure how limited the run. Actually, I can tell you now, Woods. 504 made worldwide. 504. Nice. One of them and... sitting there and showing on the podcast. This is number 285 of 504. So. And That's for all the audience so who, who can't see, he's actually wearing the draft day hat and a suit and holding up his Bucks jersey, which is really unique. So beautiful. Pretty sweet, isn't it? Yeah, I thought you'd like that one. Um, now, now, do you think I have a bobblehead, bubble head, bro? I think you might. Yeah, I think we might have a double up on this one. What you got? It's not often you can show us a bobblehead. Yeah, this one isn't nearly as neat, but it's pretty cool, man. It's the well, uh, And they're, they're passing that off for Andrew Bogart, that one, aren't Yeah, or? exactly. Right? Wow. Is it Jason Williams? Or, hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, I do have one. Hold on one sec, because I can actually see it in the background. If you look up on the top next to Jeremy Lin there, that's an Andrew Gaze, uh, an Andrew Bogart one. It's different than your one. I thought we had the same one, but let me no. just double check that. Let's have a look, man. So Robbie's just going to grab this three Andrew Bogart bobbleheads and two jerseys oh. on the show. So yeah, this does not look at all like Andrew. Yeah, they're different. Very different, man. 
Interesting. Which one looks more like it? This looks a little bit more like Ursan Ilyasova. I've yeah. got to say, this one it does, doesn't it? That's they, just the. Yeah. It, Oh, was yeah. that Andrew Berg's head that just fell off? It was, yeah. Not the greatest, um, not the greatest quality one. This one, safe to say, a little bit different <laughs> than the other one. No limited edition runs there, but yeah. Anyway, that's a Andrew Berg bobblehead with his head falling off. So yeah. And, and Robbie, although Andrew Berg did not win uh, a, an Olympic medal or a, or, a, or a World Cup medal, I don't think anyone was happier than than him to be calling that that bronze medal victory last year. No, for, that's true. For the and also, I should remind you as well, Ems, he didn't win an NBL Grand Final either. I just thought I'd do. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, right. right, you yeah. like that? Yeah, yeah, I like that. All right, had the shots fired because I don't have many, many much ammunition these days, but I had to fire that one. But anyway, um, why don't you take it away and show us that nice yellow jersey? You reckon? Yeah, very, very good friend of Andrew Bugger mm. and uh, an absolute legend in, in the news recently, obviously. Yep. So Woods are standing up wearing the retro style yellow Golden State jersey. Definitely a nice looking jersey, that one. Um, and with the matching hat is what he likes to do. So they've always had good color combinations. Oh, he's even got his name on it. He's got everything on this one. Um, always got good color combinations, don't they, the Golden State? Oh, definitely. So, how did you get your name on your hat? Come on, there's got to be a story for that. Yeah, so um, when I was working in London and I just leaving my job, uh, we had a conference in um, in Silicon Valley, right, in the mm. Bay Area, right? And um, my team, the, the guys who were in my, in my team that worked for me, thought that, to send me off for the president would be nice to get a, a customized hat. They they did they didn't they couldn't get me a Hawks customized hat, so they, they went to some shop in Oakland and they got me a Golden State Warriors hat with my name. I like it, mate. It. Very nice. nice of them. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, like we'll get into it a little bit more uh, a bit later when we talk about the finals, Robbie. I really want to speak on Steph Curry then, but I'll just quickly yeah. go through some of his accolades. I mean, you, you know, you got you got a coffee ready or whatever yeah, you would say, right? right? Definitely. Um, so NBA All Rookie First Team in two thousand and ten. NBA 75th anniversary team, 50-40-90 club in 2016. NBA steals leader in 2016. Two-time NBA scoring champion. Two-time NBA three-point contest champion. Um, All NBA, uh, NBA third team in 2018. Three times in the second team. Four times in the first team. Uh, All-Star game MVP in 2022 this year. Eight-time mm -hmm. NBA All-Star. Wow. Two-time most NBA, NBA most valuable player. Four-time NBA champion, and for the first time ever, he added to that uh, list of accolades NBA Finals MVP and the, and the new award, the uh, NBA Western Conference Finals MVP as well. So, wow, that's a fair resume. I've got two follow-up questions to ask you on that Woods, just because I've heard a few bit of talk on the podcast. Um, firstly, people are saying is Curry now the second best ever point guard in the NBA after Magic? I, I would say so. I heard someone throw John Stockton in the argument. Now, John Stockton was a great player. Great defender, you know, steals leader and assist leader and stuff, but the bloke never won anything. Never won an MVP, never won a, a finals MVP, <laughs> never. So I think Steph's way ahead of Stockton. So I think he's getting pretty close to Magic Johnson. Um, yeah, I mean, a, food I mean, for thought, I mean, isn't it? I mean, a guy like oh, Jason Kidd, maybe, you know, you could throw him no, that no, 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 nowhere near. No, 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 he didn't no, even win no, an MVP, no, Jason no, Kidd. No, nowhere near. Yeah. All right, I'll throw yeah. this other one to you. Someone also yeah. said, "Is Curry the greatest player under six foot six to ever play in the NBA?" Well, I would say probably yes. I think he I, would have to be yeah, too. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I just think his 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 story's not complete yet. I know he's getting on a bit. He's looking in as good shape as he ever has. If they can get a little bit of an extra run here, um, we'll probably talk about that later. How they how well they did keeping onto the young talent sort of thing and not trying to trade you know, some of those young pieces away for a player to, to help win this championship. But I think his resume is only going to continue to grow. So, yeah, absolutely amazing. Hey, what player. about a guy like Oscar Robertson, you know? He's in the conversation. So Oscar right. Robertson, I think Jerry West was under 6'6 six, six as well. So they were certainly in the conversation there. But, again, I don't think the resume stack up anything on what Curry's got on his yeah, Even for point guards, I think maybe a Chris Paul. Chris Paul hasn't won anything, obviously. But, yeah, Oscar Robertson may be thrown in that conversation in terms of mm. second to Magic, potentially. But, like, he's right up there. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. No, nice one. And, yeah, we're definitely going to... We're definitely going to talk about Steph a little bit more, aren't we? Yeah, so without a further ado, let's get into some NBA playoffs talk. Um, mm. You know, it's very fitting that we, we waited till after the finals finished to record this show. So we did. for the viewers, it's a bit late on the uh, episode this week. But um, yeah, so we just found time to do it after. We thought there might be a game seven today, right? So today I think, we just, we, I think we kind of hoped more than anything. We just wanted yeah. that season to go one extra game. But yeah, yeah. unfortunately, we didn't get Well, that. I did say Warriors in six, bro. You remember that? I do remember that. Woods, but I should also say, even a broken clock is right once a day. So, yeah, good to see you got that one. <laughs> nice one, nice one. Well, the experience of these guys of, of, of these guys really prevailed, man. That's what you saw. You know, and I've been, 
ramming home about it on previous shows that when it comes down to the finals, having that experience of being there previously would count for something. And we, we saw that, right? Funny thing was, mate, I've got to say, when the Celtics went up 2-1, I was a tree sitting there like, yeah, Celtics need to win this in six. So I kind of thought that. I thought they showed a lot in those first three games. But yeah, I mean, you know, obviously they only needed to win two out of the next four games to win and it just didn't happen, did it? They didn't win any more after that. So yeah, no, full credit to Golden State. It's it's pretty remarkable, actually. I think people are kind of forgetting how much they did drop, obviously, with those injured seasons and that, you know, ending, yep. up, ending up with the first round, you know, picking Wiseman and stuff like that. So pretty remarkable to get back there. I think a lot of credit goes to Steve Kerr. I mean, all I could see him was him, you know, deflecting that, you know, praise and, and the accolades that were being thrown at him. I think he really deserves a yep. lot of credit there for what he's done with that team. I, I totally agree. And, and, and coming back to Steph Curry, obviously, mm. went through his accolades and stuff a little bit earlier. But I was thinking the other day, like growing up watching Jordan play, you were just in awe of some of the things that he could do, right? Yeah. And not since him, like, have I seen a player that, like, gives me that feeling, you know, for, with the way mm. he just comes after, uh, uh, you know, does incredible things. Uh, after the half half court line, he's all automatically a threat, you know. He's the one who started shooting the ball from 35, 37 do, feet before. Do you know what I call that, Woods? I call yeah. that the laugh test, right? So yeah. Curry, Curry does stuff that makes me laugh, like literally, yeah. like, because it's funny. And there's not a lot of players I could say in the NBA that they just... Sonic, they, the way they play and how good they are actually makes me laugh. So Jordan did the same, just with the ridiculous things he did. Curry's the same. So yeah, pretty unique at someone that can sort of you know, bring on those emotions. And and he's changed the way we look at, at basketball, man. Like when we were growing up as kids, right? If we came and shot it, jacked up a three, you know, without a pass from 36 feet, you'd get yanked out of the game. You'd be yelled at by your nah, coach. No, right? my, my coach has never yelled at me for that. <laughs> they, they, encourage, they encourage it. Maybe not 36 feet, but yeah, I know what you but mean. Though. You know what I mean. Some of the yeah. shots that you would say are terrible shots. No coach would ever tell you to tell them. Yep. Uh, tell you to shoot them uh, are now becoming okay and it's not just him you know dame lillard other guys you know even you can see josh majed take some terrible shots right yeah, but it's that at, steph curry look influence. at our boy Astro as well absolutely right. influenced by steph yeah. so he's he's been a pioneer and and he's a just like jordan he's a great leader maybe not that that tyrant tyrant sort of leader that jordan mm. was off the floor but he leads by example you know and everyone Definitely. wants to follow him he makes people around him better um and i and the best example of that is your boy Andrew Wiggins, man. Like, yeah. uh, I know you've you've had a few things to say about him about very, nah. uh, various oh. different times this year, but you've got to be pretty happy with. Nah, of course, what man. He's Look, also on Wiggins. Let's, let's not get it twisted with Wiggins. I actually quite like the guy. All I've just sort of said all along is I just think it was beyond the joke, and it Fair just enough. showed those flaws in that All Star voting system. But yeah. I've got a Wiggins jersey down there. You know what I, I mean? I know like you do. I know Minnesota, you do. Minnesota bright that green pink one. one. So, oh, the look, green one. Yeah, the bright the green, green one. one. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Look, I like him. Look, one thing I will say about Wiggins, it is nice to see him finally playing some D. Um, that was always the big criticism. That I never quite understood that. And I've mentioned this to you many times offline. How someone so athletic seemed to struggle in the defensive end. Sometimes it's just a change of situation, right? You get out of a place like Minnesota and you're surrounded by veterans and positive people that are good leaders and everything else like that but yeah absolutely his rebounding and his defense in that series it, it really was the difference there i mean he was i mean you could probably say he was the second best player in the series couldn't he i yeah. mean i think he was better than what any of the you know sort of boston sort of guys that were up and down on that so no absolutely full credit to, to wiggins with the way he played in these finals and and coming out of of that kansas jayhawks men's basketball team the one thing that everyone said about him was he was a great two-way player and he's, exactly. he had a great defensive job so he never showed that in minnesota but let's yep. go back to your point steve kerr in that mm. system under him, you know, having these veterans alongside him, telling him to, you know, play for the team and, and do the right things and do yeah. all the X's and O's correctly has been a big part of, of that change we've seen. You him. can't go to a team with veterans like Draymond Green and Iguodala and stuff like that and come in and sort of, you know, be lazy or sort of try and play your own way. It's a very, very much team-based system there. Everyone sort of, you know, helps out the next man and stuff. And yeah, I think it's a great situation that he's gone to. And, and alternatively as well, I think it's a great situation for some of these young guys. We've got guys like Moody, Kaminga and Wiseman and that. I mean, yeah. what better better place to step in you're not really expected to do much now and you saw with the way you get dollar was co um, you know sort of coaching gp2 in a couple of those games and you know yeah. being hard on him but also you know positive as well and sort of you know praising and stuff like that doing that right approach there so what do you reckon woods i think we might see um Iga dollar on the on the end of a bench sort of being a head coach maybe in the next sort of two or three years yeah. maybe he could be done now man you know that, possibly possibly you know, yeah. like he's, mm. he's coming to the very end oh speaking of draymond green right i mean mm. he loves to be the villain in fact he is the villain right and he yeah. doesn't mind embracing that he's that type of guy that you want to have mm -hmm. on your team but never play against right yeah you know because he's going to annoy annoy the shit out of you basically but exactly you you got to say he's a glue guy for this team you know and maybe he's he's not going to give you those that offensive production that he was occasionally capable of doing in the past but he's still 
you know, contributes to wins. He's a winner, man, straight up, right? Like, he is. I mean, he was great in the last two games. I think when we spoke on the last pod, we weren't probably singing his praises. He'd been really were. ordinary. That was yeah. maybe at that time when Boston was up 2-1. So, yep. yeah, I guess full credit to him that he turned it around. He had a you know pretty decent scoring game in that um, game six closeout win as well. Um, yeah, just you know, good rebounding, smart sort of player and everything else like that. I thought he went a little bit away from that hot potato thing he was doing when his confidence was really shot there. So he was making good passes rather than rush passes just to get the ball out of his hands. But Massive success story, isn't it? A guy coming out of the second round, you know, people always had questions about him, you know, his, his size, his attitude, his, you know, shooting ability and things like that. And, you know, the guy's going to be a Hall of Famer. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind with what he's achieved so far. I agree. Um, so, yeah, full full credit to, to, to Big Draymond. Yeah, full credit to him. And, and another guy, another young guy you mentioned a few before is Jordan Poole. I mean, his emergence mm. this year has been amazing. I actually picked him for most improved player at the start of the year. Yeah. Um, and he came really close. He's, he's under contract, but he's he's eligible for extension this yeah. offseason. So, I mean... I, I don't yeah. know that I'm in love with Jordan Poole, if I'm being honest. I think, again, it could just be one of those right situations. I mean, if you... I'm sure there's a lot of guys with very similar games to him on, you know, on teams in the NBA that we're not seeing, you know, all the time on ESPN and aren't getting all the credit and that. Look, no, full credit to him. He, I think the big thing, he hit some big shots there. He's obviously a fearless player there. He's yeah, you know, he doesn't have much... Guy, exactly, right? exactly. Yeah. No, you know, no conscience at all when it comes to jacking the ball up. But no, absolutely. It's a good situation for him, isn't it? Just bringing him, bringing him in and letting him do what he needs to do and knowing you've got good defensive players around him. So no, he, he definitely played a big part in those finals. Yeah, I was telling to the audience, I was telling Robbie the other day, What's it with guys whose first name are Jordan, right? Whether you're Jordan Crawford, Jordan Poole, or Jordan Clarkson, you're that irrational confidence guy. Maybe it's because of the name, right? It's a great call, isn't it? I mean, I've got to say Jordan Crawford. I mean, there might be a few of our viewers that don't really remember him. He was just unbelievable, that guy, wasn't he? <laughs> Never seen a shot he doesn't like, yeah, right? Yeah, I think he's, he might even be playing Big 3 or something now. It'd be funny. I know Big 3 started last weekend, actually, so that's some more ball that we can potentially watch, even though it's a bit hard to find it. But, yeah, yeah, you're right with those Jordans. <laughs> guys with Jordan with their first name, having that, those yeah. traits. And having guys like Steph and Clay, two of the greatest shooters in the game, to have alongside him, you know, um, obviously has helped him. And yeah, let, let's mm. see, let's see where his career goes. But he's definitely going to be worth more than the three odd million he's getting paid now. Put it that Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, another guy who is has one year and thirty three point six million remaining on his contract is Andrew Wiggins, who I spoke about earlier, right? Yeah. Um, and he's come out and said that he's interested in a contract extension. He's el eligible now for that. He mm. said, um, "I'd love to stay here." Uh, being here is top notch. We're all one big family. A lot of places say that, but they show that through their actions. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, he's obviously, to your point about having a nice, nice fit, a right situation for him. Yeah. Um, I think um, it, it would be in his best interest to, to stay. Yeah. I mean, pretty remarkable. I mean, he's playing in one of the was playing in one of the coldest cities there with a, a team that didn't have a great winning culture and you know people like Jimmy Butler sort of rocking the boat and sort of other things that have gone on there. Multiple coaching changes and then he suddenly just gets in that um, that Russell trade gets there and he's just with all these veterans in a great situation, well coached, well run. So yeah, I don't think he. I, I think he's already made quite a lot of money. Now he's just going to sort of try and get some success. One guy I wanted to just touch on Woods as well before yep. we sort of move on to Boston is is the yeah. mitten, right? Um, oh, Gary yeah. Payton the second. I thought he made a massive difference in oh, some of those games. Um, he did. He's a smart player. There was like that one play where he got the ball and basically he's passed the Steph in the corner while screening off Steph's man. There was another play where he took a three when I think he might have had Robert Williams in front of him and he basically went and got the offensive round and put it in. He's got a really high basketball IQ, oh, which is definitely. probably no surprise when you consider what his dad was like. But really happy to see him. I mean, someone I think he's about 29 now. He's certainly not a young guy. Been on about probably seven different teams in training camps, G League. He's playing internationally and stuff. So good to see. I think they'll probably give him... Yeah, maybe a similar sort of deal to what you know um, uh, Jordan Bell's on. No, Jordan sorry, Poole. Jordan Poole's on now. Maybe yeah. something like that. But I'd say he would come back and play. I mean, why would you try and go to a different circumstance no. when they put all that faith in you this year? You remember at the start of the season they were looking for Avery Bradley to be that sort of player that's playing in his position. Avery Bradley, I don't even know if he had a team by the time the, the, the regular season finished. So yeah, full credit to, to Gary Payton the second. Actually thinking if I was looking at getting a sneaky next jersey, Woods, it might be Gary oh, Payton the second. Sick man. Maybe yeah. in that nice blue colored jersey, the yeah. the San Francisco style one they wear sometimes, right? For sure. And, yeah. and, and to your point, having guys like Iguodala there, you know, obviously dad was watching a lot of all those games and probably talking to him off, off the uh, 
off the floor on, on, on yeah. ways to improve. Well, he would have been he would have been talking to someone. Let's face it, yeah, dad. For, yeah. for sure. And Steve <laughs> Kerr as well. Now he's he's brilliant, man. I really like watching him play as well. Yeah. Um, and I think um, you know, the Warriors tried with like Glenn Robinson the third, and you know mm. Avery Bradley as you mentioned, and other guys to find that sort of guy who's almost like a, a spark plug off the bench and and, get, and gets it gets at it defensively. And he he's he's been that right. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's move on to the Celtics. So, look, lack of ball move, movement became a real issue for them. You know, a lot of isolation there, um, and then and they became predictable. And as a result, the team started turning the ball over a lot. Sixteen point mm. two turnovers per game during the finals. That's incredible, man. You know, that's yeah, that was that's, costly, right? That's very high. Yeah, look, it was a bit disappointing. I mean, like I said, you know, that two ones that are lead, they had they looked like they were good, but I don't know. It didn't seem like they had much of a plan B, did it? Um, when things started sort of not going right for them, they didn't seem to. And look, I, I think a, a big sort of part that that's going to come down to. Um, was their bench. I mean, I put in my notes here, their bench was ridiculous in capital letters underlined. Yeah. It was so bad, honestly. Peyton Pritchard, I mean, seriously, put me out there. I'll hit more threes than that, I guarantee you. <laughs> yeah. um, you just come out there, he'd shoot two threes in a minute every game, miss them both, not do anything else and get yanked. Um, you know, Grant Williams, I think he might have had one decent game yeah. in, out of those six in there. So Derek White was good at, at yeah, times. Yeah, he was, but he was he faded away at the end and yeah, wasn't able to hit his shot and stuff. So, yeah, it was a, sort of a cumulative effort by that bench there that they just couldn't sort of get going there. Everything I know they tried to you know, shake up the starting line up a couple of times there but that was a big one for me there that you know just they were just getting nothing and we saw that in the the games in san francisco the warriors were getting a lot of production from their role players and you do see that from a lot of the home teams i just don't think those games in boston you didn't get that same impact did you you didn't see yeah. pritchard coming out hitting three threes and getting some steals and that so they just they really lack that and i think that was a, a bit of a, a you know Grant Williams was, as you mentioned, was bringing that earlier in the playoffs. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. And, and, and they didn't. And, and same with Derek White. So. What about your mate as well, Robert Williams? There, Woods. Like I like the guy as well. I don't like him as much as you sort of thing. He just seems to me like he, for, for as big as a bloke is. He's an injury waiting to happen. Yeah, that guy. Honestly, that, that every time true. every time yeah. he goes down or grabs a finger or does something, I'm like, here we go. He's injured again. I just can't quite work out what the deal is with that. Yeah. He seems like he'd be a tough guy, but don't know if he's unlucky or what the story is there. But yeah, he's he's like an injury waiting to happen, isn't he? Yeah, I think he's got to work with his strength and conditioning coaching the yeah. season to really you know build up certain parts of his body to to be more durable right that's that's Good what call. it comes down to right yeah um, no, i agree with that so one thing i wanted to ask you about is Udoka, Udoka's approach i mean throughout the playoffs you know he, he's been you know his strategy is to you know drop the screeners man back on 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 the pick and roll especially when you know your steph curries and you know your uh, drew holidays have the ball or whatever you know and that drops coverage so to speak right yeah um and Celtics probably should have changed that up, but he persisted with it because a guy like Curry, man, you know, like he's going to make you pay, man. Maybe you get away with it with a Drew Holiday or someone like that, right? Yeah. You know, but with a guy like Steph Curry, uh, it, it, should he have changed it up, man? Or, or, you know, because it did work for him yeah. all the way up to then, right? Like, I mean, again, it comes back to not having that plan B. I'd love to say that they'd have some sort of lockdown defender that could come on and you could just try him, you know, like someone like Gary Payton II. I'm, I'm sure they would have loved to have had him in that series to guard Curry. But I just don't think that team, they had anyone particularly that matches up well with Curry, even if you try to sort of say, you Marcus know, look, Smart. we... Yeah, maybe. Well, he didn't do a good job, did he? No. I mean, I don't know. I think it's safe to say that he, his defense may be a little overrated, Marcus Smart. I think a few people have said that. Yeah, he got the award, and it is a regular season type award. But, I mean, look, I could probably name, you know, three, four, five players just without even thinking of it now that I think are better defenders than him. But, yeah, I don't think it really mattered who they had, to be honest, with the, the, the mindset that Curry had for those yeah. finals. He was so impressive. Yeah. I mean, it would be hard for anyone to stop him. Right? Yeah, no, true, true. Uh, um... Okay, our guy, Al Hofford. Want to speak about him a little bit, man. He was Al, great. Al Hofford, as Mark Jackson says. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. our <laughs> guy, right, you know. Um, look, he, he he was great. But, I mean, come third, fourth quarters, you know, when he's playing such big minutes at this, you know, advanced age, 36 years old, in the twilight of his career, yeah. you found that, you know, like, they, they needed to keep him out there because they were... You know, to stay in the game, it was a big part of... When Hofford went off the floor, you found that, you know that they would struggle a bit. So, I mean, it was, it was a good effort from him, but I think mm. they, if, if the Celtics want to go all the way, they need to tweak, tweak it a little bit with their bench here. And, and, Agreed. Know, I mean, I think he can definitely hold his head up high. I mean, even so in that game yeah. six, he really found form in the third quarter, yeah. didn't he, when he started nailing all those threes when no one else could hit anything. Yeah, but, he was brilliant. Yeah. yeah, I think they were relying on someone at his age and everything too much sort of thing. And Absolutely. Maybe if Robert Williams does develop a little bit, those two can maybe sort of swap a little bit of roles. I mean, Horford probably, he's probably playing too much, you know, for his age. But he's he's, he's doing well when he's out there, I guess. But yeah, I mean, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, Boston's not really the sort of team that's ever really going to get any higher draft picks to try and strengthen that there. But that may be that next thing they need to work on there is just some extra sort of big man insurance yep. off the bench, possibly. Yeah, totally. No, totally. Mm. Um, and finally, Tate 
hate him. Look, he's a bit predictable. He's a great player, all right? But he doesn't attack the rim enough and get to the free throw line. No, he's, he's very much going to, you know, shoot the threes or get to that mid-range. And, you know, it seems all very, like, um, what's the word? Uh, practiced, right? Not, not instinct is his game, right? Mm. And, and, and he has a lot to... Uh, answer for in terms of um, them not going on in, in that in that finals, man. Agreed. Right. I've got a bit to say about Tatum, actually. Before right. I should talk say, to me. so talk to me. the other one I want to mention, I don't think we're sort of going to talk much about him, is Jalen Brown there. Um, look, like the way that guy plays, you cannot dribble to save his life, that bloke. Honestly, you can't take more than two dribbles. So he needs to work with some sort of, you know, guard coach or something in the offseason and basically go back to basics with dribbling because his actual dribbling is horrendous. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. it's I've really seen bad. It. I've seen it. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that's my round on here. But look, about Tatum there, um, as I said, look, definitely someone I was keen to talk about. Probably after game six finished, I was really down on his performance, to be honest. Um, yeah. As you know, a couple of days have passed, I'm, you know, I probably will cut him a little bit of slack. You know, it was his first finals. He's still only 24, which is pretty remarkable. It feels like he's been around for ages. But I just think he's got some real flaws in his game that need to be addressed. So I'm going to go through them. What's three different yeah. flaws that I reckon they need to address? Right. Back of his jersey says Tatum. It doesn't say Bryant, right? He's got to realize <laughs> I, right that's, on. Yeah. that's great that he had a relationship with Kobe. It's great that Kobe helped him and that, you know, he would love the guy and respect him there. But play your own game. Don't try and copy Kobe. And you see so much of it. He's just obviously just watch so much of me. He's trying to do it. And um, another thing I'll harp on a little bit more is use your size, honestly. Um, number two. Um, Tatum is a legit six foot ten player. So look, going back to the size thing, play to your size. I find when he drives to the basket, he tends to sort of duck only in and under, makes his body smaller when he's driving, and then doesn't quite go up harder or strong enough at the rim. Um, when yep. was the last time you saw him throw a dunk down on someone? Woods, apart yeah. from dunking on LeBron three years ago, whatever it was. So uh, he just threw the odd one down. He's six he, eight. He's listed at by the way. Yeah. Oh, he's six ten. Surely. Yeah, he's listed at six eight anyway. Are you doesn't... sure? I've got him at six ten. Um, anyway, whatever it is, yeah. I, I think it's six ten from what I've heard. Anyway. Um, yeah. All right. So, yeah, so basically that's sort of the main ones there. Um, and the other thing I think as well, um, you know, try and get to the free throw line. Um, his two-point game is absolutely oh. flawed. His three-point shooting is good. He's got a good totally. step back, totally. not getting to the line enough, and I think just not finishing well enough around the ring. Um, and just for the last point there, I think you spoke a little bit about an introduction, but he's got to keep on, on working on moves. I feel what he does on the court, his moves feel very scripted and planned. It feels Practice. like he's got the ball yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's like, right, I'm going to take two dribbles to the totally. right, do a fadeaway. And it, it's like he's Plan it all out in his head. Have some spontaneity there. Have that little bit of a you know adjustment yeah. you can make. Easily telegraphed by a defender who knows what you're going to do, man. Just got to watch tape and see that this is what he's going to go do. Absolutely, right? like, go to all these certain spots and that. Yeah. So yeah, don't be afraid to you know change things on the fly. And then I think that would work if he was going around the basket. I think people are just knowing the, the places he's going to go to and everything else like that there. So as I said, had we have probably done this podcast the, the day of the game, I probably would have unleashed a little bit more. Probably a little bit. Soft on there, but hopefully those three points I've got. I mean, look, I know Jason Tatum's not listening to the Throwback Hoops podcast. He probably should, Woods. It is a pretty good <laughs> podcast. But honestly, they're the three things the guy needs to work on. I think if he could come back, you know, try and play a bit more in his own game and not copy the, you know, legendary Kobe, use his size a lot more than what he is, and just try and sort of work, you know, to have that spontaneity and, and to be able to sort of, you know, not do these scripted and planned type moves. So, yeah, that's my little, little take on Tatum there. Oh, man. Really well said, right? I agree with everything that, that you just spoke on, man. And having said all of that, and we've been a bit critical of the Celtics, they should be really proud of what they achieved this season to go that far, right? No, 100%. Look, it was, it was you know, I wouldn't say it was the greatest playoff series. We certainly had some good games. I think we've spoken. Some of the earlier rounds one that wasn't that good, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I did. One, I want to, you know, I love putting you on the spot, Woods. It's sure. one of my, my favorite things. So I was just looking through some old NBA finals history today, as I like to do. How many series since 1990, so in the last 32 years, do you think have gone to the full seven-game distance? So in, 30, in the last 32 years, how many would you say have gone to seven games? Four. Five. So not bad. Do you know what any of those five are? That's pretty yeah, close, actually. Good guess. Obviously, the Lakers versus Celtics, right? Yep. In 2010, yep. Yeah, we've got San Antonio versus Miami. This guy's on fire so far. Yep, 4-3 in 2013. Uh, and then you've got three more. And what years were the other ones in? Uh, so we've got 94, 05, and 16. So 94. 94 would have been... Jordan was on the diamond yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it would have been Houston Rockets versus... Battle of two great centers. Or New York Knicks. Yep, 4-3 yep. um, then. 
Um, Spurs Detroit in one of the, the most ugliest and low scoring final series. Oh, we've yeah, ever seen. yeah, yeah. I remember that. That, awful that was series. in the early noughties, right? Yeah, oh yeah, five, that one, yeah. yeah. And then that was the, the year other... after their championship when uh, win against the Lakers, right? Yeah, 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 that's right. And that was when the NBA at that time it ooh, wasn't great, was it? We're yeah, getting a lot yeah. of sort of 81, 76 yeah. games. And then the last one was when the Cavs beat Golden State 4 3 in oh, 2016. Yes. How did but, I forget that one? Yeah, but I thought that was pretty interesting. Though. You did well with four, but you know, if someone would have asked me that, I, I would have thought maybe 10. I wouldn't have thought five. But yeah, last 32 years, we've only had five five final series go the, the full distance of seven games some of those six game series have been great though yeah true you know, true like um and just quietly ime udoka is married to nia long yeah <laughs> that's, definitely. that's a, an interesting fact that i just uh, found one. out yeah. right yeah she's certainly don't know if she's in as many movies as she used to be but i know she was in a lot of movies one of my favorite all-time movies in friday she was in that so. yeah, yeah 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 for sure yeah um, all right Moving on. Some general discussion. I'm going to throw a few topics mm. out, out at you. You tell me what you think. So Sounds good. Well, we got some trades happen in the NBA, right? Um, Houston Rockets get Marquise, Chris, Trey Burke, Sterling Brown, Boban, Marjanovic, and a few, and, and, a, and the 26th 20 pick in, in the draft. And in, in exchange, Dallas Mavericks get, get Christian Wood. Now, I don't know if any of those mm. guys... I was about uh, to say, you probably don't need to read those names because I don't think any of them are staying in Houston. No, maybe in fact, Sterling none Brown. Of those will. Maybe has, Sterling Hasn't Brown. Marquise Chris already been there before, possibly? Yeah, Houston? possibly. Anyway, yeah. don't even yeah. waste your time on those guys no, Christian no. Wood's going to be a good pickup you know an upgrade <clears throat> on a guy like Dwight Powell and you know um, he's still a bit of a you know he's a good rebounder and a good scorer I still worry about him a little bit defensively but from know. the outside looking in right this seems like an amazing just home run trade for the Mavericks right but I don't know I've got a few concerns about Christian Wood I mean if you go onto some of those Rockets sort of fan you know sites and other stuff like that I, they literally like say he may be the laziest and like least least hard working player they've ever seen in Houston sort of thing. So again, it could be one of those ones if he goes to a better situation, obviously going to Dallas, there's a lot more expectations there. He may live up to it. But you know, the guy's played, you know, what with Detroit now, he's played with Houston. He's he's his complete game hasn't really evolved, no. I don't think. But again, if you're essentially you're just giving up a late first round pick number twenty six to get the chance with someone like him, I mean, he's probably that sort of person they needed in the final series, a big that can sort of hit that shot. I mean Dwight Powell, I don't know what's happened to Dwight Powell. He's basically fallen off the earth sort of thing. Um, Kleber's all right, but I think, you know, I think if you can put him in that position there, I, I think it's a good trade there. And like I said, they didn't give up a lot to get him, but just um, just be a little bit cautious. I don't think, you know, people are probably thinking, wow, he averaged, you know, 20 plus points last year. He's a gun sort of thing. Yes, he is. But if you can't stop anyone down the other end, when you're already playing on a team with guys like Luca and stuff like that, we'll, we'll see how we go. But Questionable but, character as well with all yeah, the shit that happened I, in the I believe so too. Year, right? Yeah, like, 100%. So let's see see how that plays out, man. Trey Burke, yep. just the one guy I want to mention, man. I'm so, he's just still in the league, right? Like, yeah. yeah, I know. He, um, he's funny, isn't he? He's bounced around a bit. He's had some big games in the past. Yep. Um, shout out, he's a, a Michigan Wolverine. I've yep. got a Michigan jumper under this one, but yeah, don't know whether it quite works for Trey Burke. Um, don't know where he's, you know, whether his career just ends up in China or something like this, or whether he just keeps sort of bouncing around. Um, you know, look, obviously our boy Boban's in that trade. Um, you know, we saw that social media picture this week of him swatting all those kids. That was great fun to see. And look, yep. he's a great locker room presence, but I wouldn't be surprised if they get rid of him. He maybe tries to, to latch on with a veteran team or maybe tries to go to Philadelphia and hook up with his boy Tobias Harris again. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and another trade, Oklahoma City Thunder get a guy you really like, Jermichael Green, in exchange for a two, 2027 first-round pick. I think OKC just want to add to their, their veterans, man, one one a year, right? Yeah. No, they're, they're... It's a strange one. When I saw the headline, I saw Jay Green. I'm like, oh, well, Jeff Green's gone back to OKC and he's you know had his 100th trade of his career sort of thing. But, yeah, Jay Michael Green there. Yeah, I don't think that's a trade that's really moving the needle for either team yeah. too much, is it? Horford, there? Derek Favors, Jermichael mm. Green. They've got to have one vet on the roster, man. They so do. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if he stays around. Okay, no worries. Waste too much time on that your boy Corey webster your main man mm. is joining the wildcats i know you're happy about that one yeah look people that know me well know that i have been a fan of Corey webster for quite a few years and i actually did something i don't normally do when i bought a, a another nbl jersey i do it a lot with nba but i bought his breakers jersey how long ago would that have been woods like seven eight years ago maybe something been a like while that. man would have been a, a while, while ago you know i really like the guy the way the guy went about it um look i think i'm seeing a lot of you know, people not that happy with the move on, you know, Twitter and other stuff like that. And I think people are a little bit dirty that he, you know, it's kind of agreed to come to us a few years ago, then ended up going to Europe. He's guaranteed that's not going to happen. Obviously, you wouldn't expect it to, but I think it's really good. I mean, I'd say to those Wildcats fans that are complaining about it, you know, you're bringing someone off the bench next season. Do you want it to be Kevin White or do you want it to be Corey Webster? I think I know who I'd prefer there. Yeah, so uh, totally. he can come on. He can absolutely put the ball in the basket. You know, he's been on NBA, summer league teams and, you know, training camps and everything else like that. No doubt the guy can score. He's also someone that can handle the ball pretty well too. So it gives him that sort of third guard behind, um, behind um, Mitch Norton and, 
And Bryce there, so yeah, really happy with the move actually. And you know, he's obviously a local player there. I don't think we paid a lot of money to get him there. So yeah, I, I, I'm happy with that the Wildcats finally got a move. Hopefully they're not done there, but no, I was pleased with that one. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you, man. He, he'll, he'll work well in, in Coach Scott Morrison's system, I think, as well, right? Yeah. So uh, I think Morrison would like that kind of player, right? Mm, so, definitely. Um, okay, moving on. Liam Santa Maria, our good friend, has mentioned that the Sydney Kings and the Br Brisbane Bullets are two teams that are in the race right now to get Josh Adams' services. Obviously, we knew that mm. he's leaving Tasmania, as announced a few uh, a few weeks ago. Now, obviously, that's a it's a money thing, a, pr a price issue. And yeah. uh, Surprised that Brisbane have the money, but yeah, I think it wouldn't surprise me if Sydney could bring him in to replace a, a, a Jalen Adams, right? I've got to say, with the Kings there, Wood, so is it true that they may be signing um, Adams just from using some of the money that fell down the side of one of their sofas, um, possibly? <laughs> so, yeah, but um, interesting. So, you're, so you're saying that um, that the MVP is not coming back? Are you, you're pretty positive about that, or? Well, I was talking to Coach Hesh the other day, right? When 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 we were at the uh, NBL one, he was sitting in the crowd with me, and he thinks that. Jalen Adams can be a starter in the NBA, a starting point guard in the NBA, right? Wow. Did he have he – clearly, he was, obviously wasn't drinking water when he was having that No, he was, he was drinking water. And he's like, look, man, he, isn't he better than Kyle Lowry right now? Isn't he better than Gail, Gabe Vincent right now? Could he not start for Miami, for example? Uh, no. No, he's not. Yeah. He's not. <laughs> right. yeah, you, can't, yeah. you can't play defense like those guys. He's not big enough. He's not fast enough. No, he's not. Like, yeah. he's no. an absolutely amazing talent in the NBA, but the same as Bryce Cotton, you know? It's basically saying that you think Bryce Cotton can go. So – yeah, Coach Hesh, not one of your best takes, I've got to say. Sorry, mate. <laughs> okay, well, yeah. NBA-wise, you know, he's definitely going to have a shot, though. If it's not as a starter, he could be coming off the bench as a... Yeah, and I think we'd both like to see him get, get back there, wouldn't we? I mean, yeah. you obviously like to have him in the Kings jersey too, but you kind of always want someone to, you know, go to the next level if they can. But, yeah, I guess we'll watch this space and see what happens with him. One Adams for another, man. I'll take that, mm, you know what I mean? That's right. right. Um, okay, former NBA guy, uh, Mang Mangok Mathiang, right? Um, yep. Could be set for return to professional basketball. Um, he's 29 now, right? He was on those Hornets teams, I think, from memory, Robbie, right? Um, yeah, yeah, he had a cup yeah. of coffee with the Hornets in, um, yeah. in Charlotte. He hasn't played since 2020. He broke his tibia, uh, tibia and his fibula, yeah. and he, he's 29 now, and he, he still thinks he can make it back to the NBA. That might have, uh, uh, that, that shit might have sailed, but it might be nice to see yeah, him back in That the... might be as bad as Coach Hesh's call, that one. I actually sort of read that quite as well. I'm like, you're 29, you just had a broken tib and a fib, and you haven't played for two years. You're not getting back to the NBA. But look, great that he's still got that mindset there, and he's obviously still got the determination and motivation there. Um, look, we've heard, obviously, a few teams are after him. It sounds like United um, may be in the box seat, from what I'm hearing, with maybe Perth a, a close second there. But yep. yeah, look, he's playing really well. He's playing in the NBL one South for Casey at the moment, um, averaging close to 20 and eight, um, playing very good defense as well. And he's just, he's looked very decent out there. So um, look, I think whoever gets him would have done well. It's obviously a good sort of signing there. Um, yeah. And as I said, he's 29. So, you know, he's, he's, he's worth a punt with one of these NBL teams. I think there's nothing to lose, is there? No, nothing to lose at all. Nothing to lose at all. And you're speaking of NBL one, another guy, Lamar Patterson, playing for the Gold Coast Rollers, I think, right? That's um, right, yeah. And I'm hearing that he is going to be signing with Cairns shortly. Nothing official, right? Yeah. It's interesting. It looked like that was all positive and about to happen late last week, and then it kind of the news sort of just dropped out a little bit there. So I'm not quite sure what that's all about. But I think we both agree, Woods. I think we probably like uh, Lamar yeah. probably more than others do. I think we're both in agreement with that. So, yep. I, yeah, I think he'd be really good in Cairns, actually. I think that, you know, if he went up there and sort of, you know, came about it with the right way, like he did the last season in Brisbane and not like that season with New Zealand. We don't need to, to re, rehash that. But, um, yeah, if he comes in in shape, I think he could be, be a good pickup for that team. They've also got a lot of young talent there, so he needs to come on and come in and be a leader now. And being a leader means, you know, looking after your body and, and training and, and working hard and stuff. But, yeah, I think that would be a good move if they could get him. And, obviously, we'll just sort of keep watching his space. But they've signed a couple of, you know, decent sort of you know, young guys out of college as well, haven't they? Definitely. Yeah. Imagine getting a good uh, import point guard to replace Machado, right? You got him. Yeah. You got Bull Cole, Lamar Patterson, Keanu Pinder, and yep. Taj, Taj McCall starting. That's the quality starting line. Absolute forget, quality. Right? Yeah. yeah, no, that could be a force to re reckon with if they could sort of get him in line and, you know, shore up that next import spot. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Patterson. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and speaking of Bull Cole, I think he's going to get a summer league shot as well, which is nice, right? Yeah, yeah it's pretty remarkable, isn't it? I probably yeah. would have been surprised if you'd said that to me, you know, halfway through the season. But yeah, look, he's got that great particular skill set. He's a 3 and D type player. He's a good size there. So you never know. I mean, there's probably how many people are listening to this podcast would that wouldn't even know that, you know, Mangok, Mathiang even played in the NBA and logged, yeah. you know, he's, 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 there'd be, I'd say a lot of people, right? So, you know, yep. what's to say that, you know, it couldn't end up being the same, um, same with him. So yep, yeah, with totally. Cole, good call. All right, and now just moving on, I don't want to talk too much about it, but just our weekend, a bit of NBL1. I wanted to mention mm. uh, 
two of our good friends, we talked about Coach Hesh and Terry Johnson, went up against each other in the Waratah League. Hornsby versus... Yeah, tell uh, us about that, Woods, because I was commentating the girls game at the time, but how did that game end up? Yeah, there? so it was um, Hornsby versus Hills Hornets, and uh, Hornsby came back from 25 down to win the game 80-75. to 75. Wow. Great scenes there, and uh, a nice big crowd watching, including... Um, Jacob Jacomas, a friend of ours, was, was watching there as well. Mm-hmm. And to see uh, two guys we know, two previous guests on the p- podcast go head to head. That's pretty cool. With, with, another, with another guest of the podcast watching, that's pretty cool. Yeah, very heated <laughs> got between those two. So uh, like brilliant, that. brilliant game. Uh, maybe um, I would like you to speak a little bit. Everyone was wearing orange socks at NBL1, right? And you were mm-hmm. telling me a little bit of story behind that. Tell the audience a little bit about what those orange socks meant. M- m- yeah, absolutely. Well. So look, it was a mental health round in the NBL one last week. Yeah, so you know, the refs with the orange whistles, the players with the socks. Um, look, we actually gave a few reads about that on the coverage there, um, you know, about Lifeline and everything else like that. So I actually want to do one of those reads with while we're here, if you're okay sure. with that. So, no, no, that's a um, great idea. So yeah. yeah, so look, one in five Australians aged 16 to 85 experience mental illness in any year, with Australian youth having the highest prevalence of mental illness than any other age group. Uh, Lifeline offers 24-7 crisis support via phone, text, and web chat support. So, look, I just really wanted to sort of say, you know, what a great initiative it is, how much we're behind all these things. We've spoken about it before on the podcast, how much mental health means to us both there. Um, And, look, I just absolutely encourage, um, yeah, yeah, anyone that needs this assistance to call Lifeline. And, of course, anyone also that wants to, you know, help out and, you know, assist and perhaps make a donation to Lifeline, that would be greatly appreciated as well. So, yeah, good cause and happy happy to speak about it. And even if you're a family member who has a friend or a relative that that that's they're suffering, you know, yeah. please be there for them as well, right? For sure, yeah. Yeah, well said, Robbie. Thanks for doing that, man. Um, all right, I want you to talk quickly about the great game that you called there, the last game there between. Uh, well, you take it away, man. Who was playing? The, the, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, so look, I called the yeah called the hometown Hills Hornets in the men's against um, Sutherland Sharks there. So, really good game. One of the sort of more fun games that I reckon I've called this year. Maybe apart from when Hills played Illawarra um, early in the so. Uh, early in the season so yeah Sutherland ended up taking the lead uh, taking the game 74 to 72 and it was one of their only few leads of the game I don't think they had more than a two-point lead all game um, and it was interesting there was actually three former Sydney Kings DP players in this game as you know Woods from going to the game so yep. we had Ben Kieran's for Hills and we had Archer Woodhill and Lachlan Hutchinson for the Sharks so it was actually Lachlan Hutchinson cool. I encourage people to sort of check out that replay so um, the game so just setting the scene the game was tied 69 all um, with about 20 seconds left both teams were in the bonus um hutchinson did a foul on ben kieran's right so basically put him to the line there was a few hills fans behind me in the let's say in the bar section it was a saturday night game they were giving hutchinson a bit of stick about that right and he sort of didn't look happy about it turned around you know said a few words to him gave him a few looks and everything else like that um Kieran's went to the line, unfortunately, missed both of them. So it remained at oh, 69 no. all. And then <laughs> inbounded at no timeout, they ran down. And Hutchinson, who'd been struggling a bit all game, came down and hit a massive three-pointer <laughs> to give him a th- three-point lead and turned around and absolutely cooked those guys in that bar <laughs> section. Um, yeah, let let loose a few um, words that I won't repeat on this podcast there. But, yeah, really exciting game. Um, it ended up sort of, you know, they got a few free throws at the end. Kieran's actually hit, you know, a, a three from beyond half court and hit the buzzer to put the margin back to two. And, yeah, very good. They actually win these Teams played, I think, in round eight of NBL One Ace. It was also a two-point game. This time, Hills got up there. But, um, yeah, very entertaining game. Look, the girls, the women's game wasn't as good there. Um, Sutherland, just very impressive game. Um, you know, Panousis and, obviously, um, uh, Lauren Nicholson there. They won by about 50 there. So, they're, I think they're one of the better teams I've seen. So, um, yeah, love the NBL One East. Um Thought I'd just mention the two top teams as well, Woods, before we finish this part. So um, in the women's um, um, NBL 1 East, uh, we've got North at 9-1, and one, who's absolutely the standout team. I haven't had a chance to see them yet. That'll be in a couple of weeks. Um, and in the men's, um, Newcastle and Canberra are both in top spot there. So, yeah, really much, uh, very much enjoying it. I know we did have a little bit of um, – we were going to mention Kiwi Gardner as well. So I wanted to say I did check out the replay of that game. Um, obviously um, – friends of the podcast and, um, you know, in Matt and Mookie that, that called that game there. And, yeah, it's hard to know exactly what happened, but it looked like Kiwi Gardner got some sort of a cork or a knee to a, a knee on knee type thing in the end of the first quarter and ended up scoreless in six minutes, which isn't going to do his league, league leading scoring average any good after, you know, playing those minutes. But And they went down by about 20 after that. So I think everyone that, you know, listens to this podcast know I'm a big Kiwi Gardner fan. So, yeah, hopefully he gets well soon. He gets a, a chance to get back out on the court and show what he can do. Awesome, Robbie. Now, uh I was going to do classic packs, but this episode is going a bit over today, so we might just give it a miss today and nah, that's move, fine. move to the outro real quickly. So um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. As always, classic packs will be back next week. But uh, yep. Rob, do you want to um, 
give a quick shout out to um, where we can be found and all of that jazz. Yeah, of course. I'd love to do that. So look, you know, obviously for those checking us out on Twitter, we're at throwbacks hoops. Um, Instagram handle is throwback.hoops. Um, email address is throwbackhoopspodcast at gmail.com. So keep any suggestions, you know, coming now. Obviously, you know, the NBA is finished now. We've got a little bit more time. Um, we are going to sort of start doing a few more interesting things in some of these episodes. We're going to do some redrafts of some, you know, classic NBA draft years and a few things like that. Um, what about yourself, Woods? Do you want to um, give the Patreon details there? Yeah, so Patreon, please jump on there and look for Throwback Hoops. Please support us. That would be great. Speaking of Instagram, I've been a lot more active over the last few weeks, um, and, and we're getting some traction there. So please do jump on to throwback.hoops, as, as Robbie said, on Instagram. And before we go, we're going to cover the draft next week, right, Robbie? Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. I'm still, you know, I'm reading all those draft boards, you know, every sort of day or so. And, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, I think we've got a bit more interest this year as well with our boy, you know, Dyson Daniels and, and seeing what some of these next star guys, you know, where does Dan go? Does Travis, there's an article come out today, they reckon, you know, Travis could potentially get drafted, which I think we maybe both weren't expecting. Um, haven't heard a lot of Hugo Passon lately. Woods will be interesting to see what happens. With He'll him. get drafted. Yeah, yeah, he should, shouldn't he? But no, looking forward Travis to it. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd be surprised if we did yeah. agree. But no, looking forward to cover that in the next episode for sure. Yep. Can't wait, man. It's actually been fun. We just got got carried away talking and it just it was a good episode, man. I really yeah. enjoyed that with you, brother. Always, man. Yep. And uh, any final thoughts we, before we say goodbye? No, I'll probably say what I'll be saying each week now. Get out and support your, your local NBL1 team. Um, it's you know, the only kind of hoops that's on at the moment. And also, if you haven't got tickets already for the Women's World Cup, you know, get onto uh, you know, Ticket Tech and the various websites and, and get some tickets there. Yep, well said, Robbie, and to all the TBH family, thanks for everything as always. Peace out.